So, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary, His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. Seventh Canto, Chapter 4, Hiranyakashipu terrorizes the universe. Today's verse 37. Please repeat. Nyasta Vidanako Balo Chadavat Tan Manasya Manastaya Manastaya Krishna Graha Grihit Atma Na Veda Jagat Idrisham Nyasta Kridak Sorry Kridan Nako Bhalo Jadavatan Manaschaya Krishna Graha Kriti Atma Naveda Jagat Idrisham Nyasta Krida Nako Bhalo Chadavatan Manastaya Krishna Graha Grihit Atma Naveda Jagat Idrisham Nyasta Krida Nako Bhalo Chadavatthan Manastaya Krishna Graha Grihit Atma Na Veda Jagat Idrisham Nyasta Having given up Kridannaka All sportive activities or tendency for childhood play. Balaha, a boy. Jagat, but as if dull, without activities. Tatmanasya, ya. By being fully absorbed in Krishna. Krishna graha, by Krishna who is like a strong influence, like a graha or a planetary influence. Grihat Atma, whose mind was fully attracted, not Veda, understood, Jagat, the entire material world, Idrisham, like this. Translation Srila Prabhupada. From the very beginning of his childhood, Prahlad Maharaj was uninterested in childish things. Indeed, he gave them up altogether and remained silent and dull, being fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Since his mind was always affected by Krishna consciousness, he could not understand how the world goes on being fully absorbed in the activities of sense gratification. Please repeat. From the very beginning of his childhood, Prahlad Maharaj was uninterested in childish playthings. Indeed, he gave them up altogether and remained silent and dull, being fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Since his mind was affected by Krishna, 
consciousness, he could not understand how the world goes on being fully absorbed in the activities of sense gratification. The poet Srila Prabhupada. Prahlad Maharaj is the vivid example of a great person fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya 8.274, it is said, Stavara Jagama Deka Na Deka Tara Murti Savatra Hayanija Istadeva Spurti. A fully Krishna conscious person, although situated in this material world, does not see anything but Krishna, anywhere and everywhere. This is the sign of a Maha Bhagavat. The Maha Bhagavat sees Krishna everywhere because of his attitude of pure love for Krishna. As confirmed in the Brahma Samhita 538, Yamsama Sundra Machincha Guna Swarupam Govindam Adi Purisham Tamaham Bajami. I worship the primeval Lord Govinda, who is always seen by devotees, whose eyes are anointed with the pulp of love. He is seen in his eternal form of Shamsunda, situated within the heart of the devotee. An exalted devotee or Mahatma. <coughs> who is rarely to be seen, remains fully conscious of Krishna and constantly sees Krishna within the core of his heart. It is sometimes said that when one is influenced by evil stars like Saturn, Rahu or Ketu, he cannot make advancement in any prospective activity. In just the opposite way, Prahlad Maharaj was influenced by Krishna, the supreme planet, and thus he could not think of the material world and live without Krishna consciousness. That is the sign of a Mahabhagavat. Even if one is an enemy of Krishna, a Mahabhagavat uh, sees him to be always engaged in Krishna's service. Another crude example is that everything appears yellow to the jaundiced eye. Similarly, to a Mahabhagavat, everyone but himself appears to be engaged in Krishna's service. Prahlad Maharaj is the approved Mahabhagavata, the supreme devotee. In the previous verse, it is stated that he had a natural attachment. <coughs> nice sargi ki ritihi. The symptoms of such natural attachment for Krishna are described in this verse. Although Prahlad was only a boy, he had no interest in playing. As stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.42 Vira Kir Anyatra Cha The symptom of a perfect Krishna consciousness is that one loses interest in all material activities. For a small boy to give up playing is impossible, but Prahlad Maharaj, being situated in first-class devotional service, was always enjoy, absorbed in the trance of Krishna consciousness. Just as a materialistic person is always absorbed in thoughts of material gain, a Mahabhagavat like Prahlad Maharaj is always absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. Mukham karochi vachalam pangam laite grim yad kripa tamaham bande sri guru dinatarinam nyasta kridanako bhalo javatan manastaya krishna graha grihit atma na veda jagat idhisram from the very beginning of his childhood prahlad maharaj was uninterested in childish playthings. Indeed, he gave them up altogether and remained silent and dull, being fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Since his mind was always affected by Krishna consciousness, he could not understand how the world goes on being fully absorbed in the activities of 
sense gratification. So, very nice purport by Srila Prabhupada. So here is glorification uh, of Prahlad Maharaj, his wonderful character. And the reason is because he was absorbed in Krishna. So the devotee manifests the wonderful qualities of the Supreme Lord. When we say Mahatvaram Ahovi Muktes, that service to the Mahatma is the door to liberation, that is correct. But also the uh, pure devotee, the Mahabhagavat, Uttamadikari, uh, he is also a window to the spiritual world. He manifests the spiritual world in his personality. The spiritual world is not restricted to some dimension uh, over there. The spiritual world pervades the whole creation. So the pure devotee, the Mahabhagavat, Prahlad Maharaj, as an example, he is always situated in the transcendent world. Therefore, he exhibits uh, the qualities of the transcendental world and in particular the source of all qualities, Krishna. Aham sarvashyabo prabhavo matak sarvam pravartate uh, That everything comes from Krishna. So, there are different aspects of the creation uh, but the spiritual world is perfect and sublime. And that is the object of meditation of the uh, transcendentally situated Mahabhagavat. And that is the goal of Krishna consciousness. Uh, what is that verse? Mahatmanas tamam patha devim prakritim ashrita pajanti ananya manaso yatva bhutam dim avyayam Satadam kirti yanto mam yadanta strida vrataha namayanta stamam bhakta nitya yukta upashite. So the Mahatma, he is uh, under the shelter of the Daivi Prakrita, the spiritual, the divine energy, the transcendental energy. So he's not restricted to a particular location because that grace of Krishna. That shelter of Krishna is fully available in every aspect of the creation. So even in the court of a great big Rakshasa, like uh, Hiranyakashipu, Prahlad Maharaj was fully in divine consciousness. So this is the Uttamadikari. Uh, and also earlier I was just, just reading the qualities and it's interesting we can repeat them as glorification. Yes, uh, verses 31 to 32. The qualities of Prahlad Maharaj, the son of Arani Kashipu, are described herewith. He was completely cultured as a qualified Brahmana, having very good character and being determined to understand the absolute truth. Shri Shri Gorni Thai Krishna Balaram Radha Sham Sundar Lalit Vishaka Shri Guru Parampara Panchatattva Tulsi Maharani Giri Govardhan Shalagram Maharaj Ki Jai Very good character being determined to understand the absolute truth. So that's very interesting, is it not? Uh, He's already so man, uh, manifesting all the wonderful qualities, but at the same time, he was determined. So that is lobta. Uh, generally, uh, lobta means greed. You have something and you want more. At the beginning, lolam, we were discussing in Bhagavad Gita yesterday. Lolam means eagerness. Lord Chaitanya, he has opened the marketplace and he's selling the holy name. Actually, Lord Nichinanda. And what is the price to buy the holy name? Huh? No. 
<laughs> Loilam. Loilam will come out of faith. Shraddha and Loilam. If you have faith, if you believe Krishna is there, then you'll be eager. Loilam. And then if you get a little bit of Krishna consciousness, then you'll want more. Just like a uh, Prabhupada contrasts with the businessman. He wants more money. He has a little bit more. He's investing and working very hard. Businessman means busy man. He's working very hard to get more. So the devotee, he is determined. Uh, he is fixed on Krishna. He is finding Krishna so wonderful, absorbing and so atmaram, so self-satisfying. He wants more. But not selfishly, uh, as Prabhupada says in one purport that he, Prahlad Maharaj is not worshipping Krishna. Uh, what is that verse in the Bhagavatam? Ahoitikiya Pratyata. He's not materially motivated, he's not caused by some greed for his own satisfaction, but rather he wants to develop his service, his bhajan, to please Krishna. So he's determined in that way. Even though he's reached such a wonderful level, he still wants to perfect his service. As Prabhupada says there, that the pure devotee sees, uh, the Mahabhagavat sees everyone engaged in Krishna consciousness except himself. So he feels, I have to improve. So he's determined to understand. Uh, he had full control of his senses and mind. So the senses and mind, they follow the consciousness. So when the consciousness is fixed on Krishna, then the senses and mind become placated. Like the super soul, he was kind to every living entity. That's very interesting, isn't it? Like the super soul, he was kind to every living entity. Uh, very interesting. Super soul, he's kind to every living entity. And was the best friend of everyone. Suridam Sarvabhuta Nam Krishna. To respectable persons, he acted exactly like a menial servant. So, to the pure poor, he was like a father. To his equals, he was attached like a sympathetic brother and he considers his teachers, spiritual masters and older god brothers to be as good as the supreme personality of Godhead. So in his superiors he sees them as manifestations of the supreme lord. He was completely free from unnatural pride <coughs> that might have arisen from his good education, riches, beauty, aristocracy, and so on. So, those qualities are natural to the soul because all these good qualities manifest from the Supreme Lord and as well as the living entity. We are Atma, uh, Jivatma. We are Mavai Vamsa Jiva Loke. We are the uh, Angsa of Krishna. Krishna is the fire, we are the spark. Krishna is the gold mountain, we are the fragment of gold. However, because we are fragmental, we have to have the shelter of Krishna to fully manifest those qualities. So in today's verse, that shelter is uh, described in basic format. He's absorbed his consciousness, is running towards Krishna. And therefore, he's not interested in material affairs. Uh, Prabhupada said there in the purport, generally a young boy wants to play, climb a tree or do whatever, learn how to ride a bicycle, play, play marbles, whatever. But Prahlad Maharaj, he was above all that. Now that's not to say that when we have Krishna conscious children in our society, we should not allow them to play. We shouldn't artificially uh, force children to imitate Prahlad Maharaj. Everyone should be allowed to express and develop themselves naturally. This is an important point. 
It's not that we think, oh, children shouldn't play because Prahlad Maharaj didn't play. And then that will make them crazy. They'll become frustrated. And then they'll hate Krishna conscious activity because they feel that they're forced. Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada explained there, if you remember, this was natural to Prahlad Maharaj. So we have to be patient, but we guide people in the right direction. That's our duty. So this is an important point. Now, uh, let us understand an Uttamadikari and how to become that. So generally, yes, devotion, uh, bhaktas can be divided into three categories. Kanishtadikari, Majyamadikari, Uttamadikari. So we should understand the process of development. Uh, and we should act in accordance. Uh, but we shouldn't try to imitate stages, like I say, we shouldn't force children to give up playing because that's not what a pure devotee does. So similarly, we shouldn't straight-jacket people and into a, some mentally conceived position of how a Mahabhagwat should act. Uh, everyone should be treated in accordance with their own particular consciousness. Uh, and this is uh, given in the Uddhava Gita. What is piety? What is impiety? What is good behavior? What is bad behavior? Uh, Krishna tells Uddhava. Krishna tells Uddhava that uh, piety is to act in accordance with your level of development of consciousness. Therefore, uh, if somebody is on the Kanishta Adi platform, he should not imitate the Mahabhagwat artificially through mental conception. Uh, then that is impiety. But if he acts according to his qualification, Kanishta Adikari means qualification, and takes shelter of the instruction of Guru, Shiksha Guru, some Mahatma, then he can be guided appropriately. Uh, we've seen that ourselves with the uh, behavior of another Mahabhagavat, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, we came to Krishna consciousness, we didn't know anything about Krishna practically speaking, we may have heard the word here and there, uh, but Prabhupada was able to guide us uh, from that platform and encourage us to a higher platform. So, like I say before many times, don't use the standards of pure devotion as a rod to hit people over the head because they're not on that position. Then you'll just become a fanatic and you have no realization. So, impiety is to not act according to your qualification. That means if you have a certain level of realization, then you should act in accordance with that. You should be careful that you don't uh, give up the practices that are suitable for your level of devotion. And at the same time, you should not become sahajiya and affect spiritual mo emotions from the mental platform. You should be in harmony with your heart. This is how Prahlad Maharaj is acting in the description of today's verse. He's acting according to his own development. Of course, he's on the Uttamadikari platform, completely in harmony with Krishna, so that is natural. But in the process of sadhana, we should understand through good instruction, good association, what is a suitable practice for our own selves. And then, step by step. Uh, so, beginning platform, first is Kanishtadikari, that is beginning qualification. Now, Kanishtadikari has no tattva. He doesn't know Siddhanta. He doesn't know particularly. Siddhanta is, or tattva, is broken into three parts. Sambandha Gyan, Abhideya Gyan, Prayojan Tattva. Sambandha means knowledge of the relationships of Krishna and his 
the interrelationships between Krishna and his energy. So, Abhidayagan means how to pursue devotional service, practice, and uh, Prayojan Tattva is to understand the necessity, the goal. So, Sambandha Gyan is absent in the Kanishta Adhikari. So, therefore, he is generally materially motivated. So, he's also called Prakrita Bhakta, also called Vaishnav Chaya or Vaishnav Abbas, a shadow of Vaishnav, a semblance of a Vaishnav. So you might say if he's a Prakrita Bhakta, he's materially motivated, like we say, Ahoitiki Apratiyata, Ahoitiki means not materially motivated. Then how is he designated as a Vaishnav? Yes, he, in the true sense he's not a Vaishnav. A Vaishnav is somebody who's established in pure devotional service, unmotivated service to Krishna and the spiritual master and the devotees. So if he is materially motivated through ignorance of tattva, how is he a Vaishnav? So he is included in the family of Vaishnavs because of one quality. This is enumerated by the Acharyas and the Shastra. He accepts the form of Krishna as eternal. He doesn't think, as the Mayavadis do, think that Krishna is a manifestation uh, by an interaction of the Brahman with the modes of material nature. No. Uh, and therefore it is coming and going and manifesting according to the Brahman. So, he is thinking, yes, the form of Krishna is eternal. It is Sat Chit Ananda. Uh, form of Krishna is Sat, eternal. It is not manifested in conjunction with the material energy. That is the Mayavadi's foolishness and twisting of Vedic Siddhanta. So he believes in Krishna and therefore he performs a worship of Krishna. Not exactly Bhajan because Bhajan ultimately is a hoitiki, a pratyata. But he worships Krishna and because he is still materially contaminated he becomes materially motivated in his worship. So how does he go from Kanishta to Madhyamadikari? Like we say, we want to learn how to progress. So the Madhyamadikari is established in Sambandha Gyan. Uh, and this has liberated him, just like Prahlad Maharaj, he's fully liberated from all material um, desire because he is completely absorbed uh, in his swarup, spiritual form serving Krishna in that way. So there is no distraction by the inferior energy. So the Majjhimadi Kari, uh, he knows Sambandha Gyan. So what is Sambandha Gyan? There are seven aspects to Sambandha Gyan. And the Majjhimadi Kari, through the mercy of Guru, Shastra, Sangha, uh, sadhu, Shastra, Bhakya. He knows uh, in basic format uh, Sambandhigyan. So what are those seven points? First one is Hari Ishwara. He knows that Hari, Radha Krishna Hari uh, and Hari is the supreme controller. Janmadi Ashyata. Everything has emanated from him so he knows uh, that Krishna is supreme controller. Everything Sutri Mani Gana Iva Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvam Sri Mat Odita Mevaba Everything has come from a spark of Krishna's splendor. Krishna is woven into this creation and he is crea uh, controlling everything uh, by Paramatma in the material world, by ecstatic love in the transcendental world. So Hari Ishwara. Second one is Sarva Shakti, uh, Achincha Shakti. He knows that Krishna has unlimited variety of Shakti, uh, different Shaktis, different opulences. And they are unlimited in variety and unlimited in depth. So the whole universe uh, is, pervade, is created out of Krishna's Shakti. 
So he doesn't see any difference between the Shakti and the Shakti Maan. Uh, but he is absorbed in contemplation of everything as Krishna's Shakti. Basically, uh, in essence, he sees this Shakti as Krishna Kripa. He sees it all as the mercy of the Supreme Lord. He is thankful. Oh, I am existing by the mercy of Krishna. So, Mam Namaskuru, right? Four things Krishna says. Mam Namaskuru. So when he pays obeisances, he pays with a, a, a heart full of gratitude. I am created by you. This is your generosity, Krishna. I am created by you and you have kept a store of ecstatic love of God in my heart in seed form. So thank you very much, Krishna. He pays obeisances with that sense of gratitude. And he sees the whole creation expanded as the mercy of Krishna. So, and that is the factual situation. And then the third aspect of Sambandagyan is Rasavai Saha, Nama Chantamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasavigraha. The universe is not just full of energy in the sense of a kind of mechanical interaction. No, but it is full of rasa. It's full of mellow, it's full of tastes. So we all know those, right? Five primary rasas. Um, neutrality, servitude, fraternity, parental, conjugal. Then there's secondary rasas. Laughter, astonishment, chivalry, compassion, anger, dread, ghastliness. And then there are Rupa Goswami explains these in the Nectar of Devotion. You should study all these things. And uh, there are Sanchari Bhavs, also known as Vaibhavs, 33. This is a manifestation in today's verse of uh, one of the Sanchari Bhavs. The Sanchari Bhavs are also known as impelling moods, rasas. And they act to churn the ocean the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindo, the, uh, they churn the ocean into different flavors. Just like a good cook knows how to combine different tastes and spices and bring different uh, tasting items. So the Sanchari Bhavs, they cause the impelling, the mixing of the rasas into a beautiful variety kaleidoscope of taste. So these are the three aspects to do with Krishna. Now these are mulas, these are roots, they can be expanded out. But if a devotee understands them in root form, then when he studies the Shastra, he can recognize them in relationship to the roots. So the next three deal with the living entity, these Sambandagyan. Second, uh, first one is Jiva Angsa. The, the Jiva is the Angsa of Krishna, like we're explaining. Krishna is the fire and uh, the living entity is the spark. Krishna is the mountain of gold, we are the particle of gold. So he knows I'm non-different from Krishna, uh, just in the same way that the finger is non-different from the supreme law, uh, the body, so the jiva is non-different in one sense from the supreme lord. He is the Angsa of Krishna. So also like the Prahlad Maharaj, he's seeing his, uh, the, those he regards as spiritually superior, maybe just through etiquette, as manifestations of the Supreme Lord. So the devotee, situated in Sambandagyan, sees all living entities like himself as Angsa of the Supreme Lord. It doesn't just refer to himself as Angsa, but all living entities. This is the Madhyamadikari. He sees Krishna in the living entity. So this is a very important point. And then Jiva Angsa, then Jiva Banda. Um, Jiva Banda means he understands how the Jiva interacts, the relationship of the Jiva with the material energy. Uh, so the first thing is the tattva of the Jiva, Jiva Angsa, but then how he's interacting with the material energy. So he knows how the jiva is bound in the material world through 
extraneous desire through the material energy. He understands all that. Then the third point is also, uh, third point regarding the jiva is jiva muksha. He understands how the jiva can be liberated and he understands the condition of liberation. Just like in the Vedanta Sutra, there's four khandas. So the fourth khanda, khanda means corner or portion or section, uh, is called the muksha khanda. So in there, in the Vedanta Sutra, um, Bedavyas, commentary of Baladeva Dibhushan is the best. He explains the condition of the liberated jiva. So that's six points. Three for Krishna, three for the jiva. What is the last point? Seventh one, achincha bed abed. He knows that everything ultimately is non-different from Krishna. Yet there is variety simultaneously. Achincha means not conceivable by the material mind. The material mind is confined by material logic and causality. But the liberated soul is able to commune Daivim Prakriti Mashrita and he gets relevation above and beyond material causality and material reasoning. He realizes directly that everything is Krishna and yet Krishna is separate. Uh, everything is Krishna yet there's variety within the manifestation. So this knowledge when it is understood from the potent Vaishnav and contemplated by the sadhaka, this liberates him from material desire and fixes him on transcendental platform. So the first business of the spiritual master is to give Sambandha Gyan, to liberate the disciple. Now in the liberated condition, then he can perform bhajan. So then he becomes Madhyamadikari, bhajan in the true sense, rather than just worship. Bhajan means I'm acting to satisfy the spiritual master, I'm acting to satisfy Krishna, I'm acting to satisfy Krishna's uh, devotees. In the 18th chapter of the Gita, uh, Krishna, Arjuna asked Krishna, what is chag, what is sannyas? So a very interesting answer. Krishna says, Chag means you're not attached, you give up uh, an attachment to the fruit of activity. That means you're performing activities, but not for some result that you can grasp. You perform your activities out of a sense of spontaneous duty. So that's the fruit. You're not trying to grasp the fruit of activity. So what about sannyas? What is that? Sanyas means that you are no longer impelled in, to activity by material desire. You're impelled to uh, activity by spiritual ecstasy. Uh, you're, not perform you're not impelled by the three modes. You're impelled by a devotional attitude to spiritual master. You execute everything for the satisfy of guru. You're not trying to gain something like the materialist, snatch some section of the material energy and enjoy it. So that is actually sannyas. So the Madhyamadikari freed by Sambandha Gyan uh, is in the middle Adikari. That means he's in this platform where he is now sannyas. He's giving up attachment uh, practically to nil. Uh, we know, what's that verse? Nasta prayeshu abhadreshu nicham bhagavata sevaya bhagati uttama sloka bhavaka bhakti ohit That by hearing Bhagavatam, then all the effects of the lower modes become practically destroyed. So this is a good indication of Majimadikari. Is he may have some remnant of material conditioning, of course, as long as we have the material mind and body, it's very hard to get rid of it completely, the effect. But he's now uh, 
Stani Shruti Katan Tanuva Manovir. Through hearing the divine message of Parampara, he's liberated and he's getting a taste for transcendence. That means he's realizing transcendence. So the Madhyamadikari, uh, at his stage of platform, is meant to perform, uh, intensify his hearing and chanting uh, and his smaranam. That will bring him to Padasevanam. It will bring him into communion with transcendence and the personalities thereof, Padasevanam. He'll be able to feel their presence and act accordingly. So through the uh, Sambandagyan, he becomes liberated uh, from, and he's able, therefore, the Madhyamadikari, to gradually come in touch with Super Soul, just like stated here. He's actually now able to get information, direction, realization through the Super Soul. Whereas the Kanishtarikari and the lower Madhyam, he uh, should be very careful at this point. Unless he's fully purified or greatly purified, he may think that his material motivations are coming from Super Soul. So that's, like I say, we should act accordingly. Therefore, he should be, we should always be under the shelter of Mahabhagavat, Uttamadikari. So the Kanish, uh, the Madhyamadikari, he then uh, should intensify his uh, worship. And uh, that means Abhideya. Abhideya. He should learn how to improve. Vaidhi Bhakti means following rules and regulations. But within that Vaidhi Bhakti, uh, we want to develop Raganuga Bhakti. Raga means attachment, Anuga to follow. So, Nectar of Devotion, Prabhupada explains, Rupa Goswami explains that the great leaders of the Staibhavs, the five primary rasas, they are like great ships traveling in the ocean. And just like a big ship, uh, it leaves a wake. Uh, and the water is sucked along behind the big ship. So, Raganuga means to follow in the particular attachments of these great leaders of the rasa. So when he is in the liberated and he's a well-developed Majjama, then he should be realizing a certain attraction to a certain Staibhav. So at this point, he should specialize in uh, studying the Leela in that way. That will develop his Raga his attachment, following in those Staibhavs. So then that will bring him to Uttamadikari platform, which means Bhava Bhakti. Bhava Bhakti is, means substantial spiritual emotion. The actual spiritual emotion is there in the heart when he performs his bhajan. So Uttamadikari is Bhava Bhakti and then Prem Bhakti. So then by his meditation and development, of his internal awakening swarup, uh, then this brings ecstasy to him. And this is the beginning of Uttamadikari platform. So at the stage of Bhava Bhakti, ecstatic emotion, then his actual realization of Krishna will be direct and personal. And in that platform, he will once Krishna is realized, then he'll realize his relationship with Krishna. So that is called Swarup Siddhi. At the stage of Bhav Bhakti, one will realize uh, in step by step and uh, gradually increasing depth one's relationship on the transcendental platform with Krishna. And then, of course, everything will happen automatically uh, because he will become absorbed in Krishna. Uh, this is way beyond uh, the Madhyamadikari is Anath and Rivriti stage. He becomes Nishta. So after Nishta comes Ruchi and then Ashakti. So this is Uttamadikari platform. So we should understand this process and know how to act accordingly. 
If we find I'm still materially contaminated, I'm still thinking of material things, then we should study uh, Sambandha Gyan. Uh, it's all there in the Shastra. It's all methodically laid out in the Jaiva Dharma by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Srila Prabhupada directly recommends this book in 1969 on the appearance day of uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur in London. That was way back then. He said, these are very important books uh, and we are trying to present them. So they're all available now by the grace of Charanga Thakur. <laughs> you can get them. And anyone that studies those books will get all the methodical structure of Vaishnavism in a very ecstatic way. And you'll know how to progress. So, Uttamadikari platform means that. He's now Swarup Siddhi. So therefore, his emotional attachment is condensing down to uh, fixed love of God, praying. Uh, so, uh, it's explained there in the Nectar of Devotion, Rupa Goswami explains that in this material body, we cannot uh, experience the higher levels of praying. There are eight divisions of Prem. Prem itself in the first stage is given as the first stage. Then Sneha, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag, Bhava, Mahabhav. So those higher stages, they're too powerful to ex be experienced by the soul in the material body. Therefore, the 33rd of the Sanchari Bhavs is Mrityu, death-like symptom. And this is also similar here to Ma uh, Prahlad Maharaj. He was dull to the world. To the world he's dull, but he's vibrantly alive on the transcendental platform. So therefore, externally, you maybe you see that he's withdrawn. He's having some kind of uh, withdrawal from the external situation, but he's feeling uh, completely vibrant in his relationship with Guru Krishna devotees. So Uttamadikari is on that platform. Swarup Siddhi is serving Krishna constantly. Param Drisva Nivartite. Daivim Prakriti Masya. Mahatmanas Tamampatha. Satadam Kirtiyantomam. He's got no other interest other than the glorification of Krishna. Because he doesn't see material energy in the sense of illusory condition. Uh, Nitya Yukta Upashite. It means he sees everything as Krishna's energy, so everything should be used for Krishna. Uh, he wants to unite the separated material energy, so-called separated material energy, in the service of Krishna. And that is the ultimate performance of bhakti. Uh, the ultimate, particularly in our sampradaya, we want to unite Srimati Radharani with Krishna. So in the stage of sadhaka, we want to unite all the separated material energy and all the separated uh, fallen living entities in the service of Krishna. So it's the same mentality of transcendence within the material world. So also, um, Bhakti Vinoda explains, it's also in the Shastra, it's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, that the Vaishnavas are divided into, the established Vaishnavas are also divided into three. Uh, Vaishnav, Vaishnav Tara, Vaishnav Tama. Vaishnav means, uh, but they should not be related to Kanishta, Madhyam and Uttama. That's often a mistake. Because there's three levels of Vaishnavas, uh, therefore they're related to Kanishta, Madhyama and Uttama. No. The Vaishnav starts in the pure sense, the real sense, at Madhyama. So there's three types of Vaishnavas starting at the platform of Madhyamadikari, Nishta, Tata, Ruchi. Uh, and those, the first one, uh, this is explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The Vaishnav is somebody who has chanted the holy name once. So you might say, everyone is chanting. No, he's chanted the holy name once. 
without material motivation. Uh, that means he's situated in Sambandha Gyan and he's realizing that Krishna, Namani Chintamani Krishnas, Krishna is the holy name. So he said it once purely. So that is the beginning platform of Madhyama. He's come out of Kanishta, Prakrita, Bhakta, material motivation. And then um, he's come to, then he can progress to Vaishnav Tara. Vaishnav Tara is an upper Madhyam. He has always got the taste for the name. Nama Sada Ruchi. Right? What is that? Yes. He always has taste for chanting. So he always wants to chant. Uh, he doesn't want to spend a moment without chasing because he's in the habit, he's got the taste. And then the Vaishnav Tama, he's the Uttamadikari, uh, well established Uttamadikari. What does Uttama mean? Ut means above, Tama means forgetfulness, above forgetfulness of Krishna. That is the whole problem in the material world. So the Uttama is the Vaishnav that when you see that person you immediately remember Krishna. And that was Hirani Kashipu's problem with Prahlad Maharaj. <laughs> the demon, the Rakshasa, the Asura, they want, they want to forget Krishna and control the material energy. He was controlling the universe? No. Krishna is always in control. They have an illusory conception of control. They can't even control their own senses. They're burning in the fire of anxiety. So frustrated when they see the peacefulness, the joy of a Vaishnav manifesting, like we say, a window, a window manifesting Krishna, then they become very agitated. Huh? So, one sign of uh, Uttamadikari is that generally uh, the overly demoniac, they are hateful. Uh, but the Vaishnava remains neutral. In fact, not only neutral, just like Super Soul is best friend, after Hiranyakashipu was polished off by Nasringadev, uh, Nishringadev said, do you want, uh, please take some benediction. Prahlad Maharaj said, I'm not very interested, no, no. But there's one thing, please be merciful to my father. Huh? So that is the wonderful quality of the Uttamadikari. And we saw that with Srila Prabhupada, he's always giving kripa. What's that verse? Sri Chaitanya Kripa Bharo Bhuvi Bhuvo Bharava Hantara Ko Right in the Sad Goswami Ashtaka So Prahlad Maharaj is manifesting that mercy Not as a pose but from the heart So the Uttamadikari, the Tama Even though he may be harried and troubled by the materialistic He still gives Kripa Because his very nature is Kripa And this is a very important point in this, this time in Kali Yuga, there's many material, man-made conceptions, material religions of God. Huh? They have an idea that God is vengeful and he's destroying cities because they don't obey him. And he's an angry God, right? In the Old Testament, the Torah like that. They try to have a new idea in the New Testament, but still it's God, yes, God loves you, but if you don't obey him, you're going to hell forever. Well, what kind of God is that? Huh? So we should understand that through Prahlad Maharaj, the behavior of Prahlad Maharaj is Nutamadikari, that God, Krishna, in his real condition has unconditional love for the living entities. He's not looking for a chant to beat you over the head because you were mistaken in your activity. Krishna is always ready to give shelter huh? without condition. 
All we have to do is chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we should understand through Prahlad Maharaj's wonderful qualities this nature of the Supreme Lord. We should not be burdened with guilt that I am not able to do this, I broke this commandment, I did this, I did that. No, we should try to overcome it. Uh, if we realize we're doing wrong, then that's a good platform, then we're on the right platform. And we should always approach Krishna knowing that he is unconditionally merciful. Just like the mother and father are merciful, if they're good of course, they a material example, but still, to the child. The child does something wrong, leaves the house, does something wrong, he's still the father, still the mother, they are the well-wisher. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we should f throw aside all other conceptions of Krishna other than that. Uh, and we should find, just like Prahlad Maharaj, within ourselves, the determination uh, to make a little progress from our condition. Thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada, Srimad Bhagavatam, Sadhu Sangha, Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Jai.